Hey, it's Ashley, and I'm back with chapter three of Marry My Husband. Um, the last time we read, we learned that she just came, she just realized she's in her, she's 10 years in the past. She hasn't married her husband yet. She's seen her phony boyfriend currently in this timeline and her fake friend and she's seen her boss and she just got home to her apartment after kind of freaking out not to the extent as she did in the drama it was more subtle um or it was more visually funny to see in the the live action drama. So we are on chapter three of Marry My Husband and this chapter is called Thank You Daddy. Think of it as pocket money from your dad, okay? Her lungs tighten like someone had strapped a corset on her Jiwan forgot to breathe as she opened the folded bill. The face of King Sejon blurred, her glasses turning foggy from tears. Dad. Her hardworking and talented father quickly found a job after they arrived in Seoul. In the morning, when she walked out rubbing her heavy eyes, her dad had already gone. But without fail, she was always greeted by a warm breakfast and a 5,000 or 10,000 won bill, along with a messily written note. Buy yourself some crackers with what's left after you get pencils. The side dishes didn't come out well. Take the money with you to get crackers if you're hungry. To her, to her dad, 20-year-old college student Jiwon was still a young girl who ate crackers. Keep this and buy yourself some crackers, kiddo. Think of it as pocket money from your dad, okay? The same went for 27-year-old Jiwon and 37-year-old Jiwon. They hadn't... Why hadn't she known? Why hadn't she realized? If she had, she would have called him dad and hugged him. She would have told him she loved him one last time. While remembering the feeling of her dad's scruffy beard, Jiwan buried her face in the 10,000 won bill. No matter how much she poked at her memory, she couldn't remember seeing her dad's face in the taxi. It was like someone whitened out only that part. It'll all work out fine. You bet it will. You'll become healthy and be running around before you know it. You'll earn tons of money and you'll get someone wrapped around your finger who'll do anything for you. Only that reassuring voice echoed clearly in her mind. Okay, I'll do what you say, Dad. A promise that you'll live well is payment enough. I promise. Jiwan's shoulders heaved. Her silent tears soon turned into loud sobs. This wasn't a miracle or an illusion. It was the last gift from a father who loved his daughter more than himself. Jiwan cried her heart out, not registering there was someone next to her. She couldn't remember how long it had been since she cried out loud like this. Even when the doctor told her she had, her days were numbered, she'd laughed instead. That was just how exhausted she'd been. Juran watched Jiwon cry and quietly left the break room after placing a box of tissues next to, next to her. They weren't close enough for Juran to soothe Jiwon while she cried. Miss Kang seems to be sick, Juran said as she tapped on Minwan's desk partition. Minwan had been gathering documents to work on outside the office and he furled his brows. Jiwon, I told her to leave early because she said she was feeling dizzy earlier. She's not dizzy, though. She was even crying. Oh my, you're so funny, Miss Yang. Suman was vehemently tapping on her keyboard from across them, giggling. You probably saw something wrong, she said. Our Jiwon doesn't cry, even if she's lonely or sad. I really did see her crying. She's even sobbing. You should check on her, Minwan. Minwan tossed his bag back into his, onto his desk and headed for the break room. Suman's gaze followed the man that was wearing a handsome, slim, <laughs> that was wearing a handsome, slim-fitted suit. Then she quickly looked away. Jiwon, 
Minwan bent over once he got over near Jiwan, who was hunched up on a chair. Jiwan looked up from blowing her nose on the 10,000 won bill. Minwan blinked, surprised to see her in such a state. What's wrong? Did you cry? Just die quietly. You were hit because you're trying to ruin someone else's life. Those horrifying words overlapped with his soft and reassuring voice. Jiwan put the money in her pocket and wiped her glasses. Minwan's concerned face looked fake. Jiwan didn't have any inkling of the passionate love she once felt for him anymore. She just wanted to get away from this trashy, this trash quickly. Move. Minwan paused at Jiwan's indifferent voice. Are you sick? Do you want to take the afternoon off? Whatever, she was going to die anyway. Ugh, so unlucky. Jiwan ignored him and was about to move past him when Minwan grabbed her wrist. You're not feeling well. Should I get you some medicine? Let go. Jiwan shook off the hand that was on her wrist. Even if she had gone insane and the situation was a dream or an illusion, she didn't want to associate with this rancid piece of trash. Don't talk to me. Don't even look at me. Minwan looked blankly at Jiwan. She felt like she was going to barf. Already starting to shiver, she flung open the door to the break room. Ah! A woman who was about a head smaller than Jiwan jumped back in surprise. Obstacle after obstacle kept getting in her way. This time it was Suman. What is it, Jiwan? I heard loud voices. Can't you overlook this, please? The living have to live. You're going to die anyway. <laughs> The woman who'd been crying pitifully and acting like the victim was now looking at Jiwan with a normal face. Jiwan could have been less could Jiwan would have been less disgusted if a bug with hundreds of legs squirmed in front of her. She gritted her teeth and muttered under her breath, "Deranged bitch." "Huh? What did you say?" Jiwan chuckled in disbelief at Suman's feigned tone. How many years had she been tricked by her? Suman tilted her head in confusion when Jiwan suddenly smirked. Jiwan! Miss Kang! A deep voice called Jiwan from afar. She was thankful for the sudden interruption, since it allowed her to walk by Suman without causing a scene. Further down the hall, a man, wearing a crude tie with his shirt sleeves rolled up, looked down at Jiwan through horned-rimmed glasses. Did you call me? Um, Jiwan definitely knew this person, but why was he so unfamiliar? She hesitated, not knowing what to call this man. She could recall everything about the past 10 years in full color, but only memories of this man were a blurry black and white. Miss Kang, the man called her name again. Are you all right? Um, yes, I'm sorry. Jiwan bowed apologetically, not even knowing what she was sorry for. When an employee ID card on the desk entered her vision, UNK Food Department head Ji Yok Yu. Only did, then did parts of her memory slowly return. A tall man who always wore suits that never said anything other than what was necessary. De Heart, department head Ji Hyuk Yu was a promising talent in the company. However, he suddenly quit less than a month after Ji Won was married, and no one had heard of him after that. Please be more careful in the future if you're sorry. He always spoke in the same tone, so it was hard to know what he meant by that. Ji Hyuk slightly furled his brows, seeing Ji Won's confused face. This is a workplace. Please separate your work from personal matters. It occurred to Ji Won that her tussle with Min Won could have appeared like a couple's fight. She barely managed to straighten her disgusted expression and nodded. Yes, understood. And this? He pulled out a handkerchief from inside his breast pocket and held it out. Why was he giving this to her? He tapped the corner of his eye after Jiwon accepted, accepted it awkwardly. Here. When Jiwon mimicked his motion, she realized her eyes were wet. She quickly took off her glasses and wiped her eyes with the back of her hand. I apologize, I'm not feeling too well. Not only did she meet with trash immediately after coming back to this life, but her boss also scolded her. How very normal for things around her to always go wrong. Being alive again only made the realization more vivid. Why don't, um, why don't you go wash up first? Ji Hyuk paused, then continued again. Then you can take the afternoon off. All you have to do is deliver these documents and get them stamped. 
He fished a business card off his desk and held it out along with a file of documents. Jiwon felt a sense of deja vu when she took them. She had definitely been through this situation before, but it was so long ago that she had a hard time remembering. She blinked repeatedly, trying to locate the memory while she stood there blankly with the documents in her hands. Ji Hyuk, who was looking at Jiwon with the same dry gaze as before, tapped his desk with his index finger. Miss Kang. Uh, um, never mind. I'll go and deliver the documents. The moment Jiwon bowed and turned around, she tripped over a trash can next to the desk. Ah, her body plunged to the ground. She wasn't able to find her balance because of the trash can rolling between her legs. Right. She had tripped after taking these documents in the past, just before she fell to the ground with a splat. Like, had happened in the past. Someone grabbed her waist from behind. Jiwon had been squeezing her eyes together to brace herself, so she looked back in surprise and relief. Mr. Yu? The emotion behind Ji Hyuk's thick, horned-rimmed glasses looked com complicated. A mixture of surprise and pity. Jiwon thought that maybe she was seeing things because she wasn't wearing her own glasses. Even objects which were right in front of her appeared blurry. You seem to be a bit dizzy. You should visit the hospital after you deliver the documents, Miss Kang. After a few seconds, which felt more like minutes, Ji Hyuk gently removed his arms. Oh, yes, thank you. Ji Wan quickly wiped her glasses and wore them, her vision now clear. She hurried to her desk to gather her belongings, her bag, a small notebook, a keychain. They seemed very out of style to the current her, but each item was special. Ji Wan, why did the person sitting next to her have to be Minwan? She ignored the voice that called her name and escaped the office. She worried that he might follow her out, but thankfully he didn't. Ding, the elevator arrived. The warm sunlight of the afternoon poured down on Jiwon's head as soon as she walked out of the revolving doors of the lobby. Wow. Jiwon was in awe upon seeing a scene that wouldn't have affected her in the slightest when she saw it back then. The sky was blue. How is the sky of Seoul during the season of cherry blossoms so blue, as if someone had brushed the sky a bright azure? No matter how deep she breathed in, she couldn't feel any of the usual stale microdust in the air. She was back. She really was. Her heart swelled. Jiwon pulled the rubber band from her ponytail, allowing her luscious thick hair to flow over her shoulders. What should she do now? How should she do it? No, how should she live? First, she decided to take care of her given task. She breathed in deeply one last time and strolled toward the bus stop after digging around her memory. Sitting on the bench, she was able to find directions to the address on the business card after flipping through her notebook. Good job, 26-year-old Jiwon. You jot down everything so neatly. While she was complimenting herself, the bus arrived. Her destination was... Yok Samdong. Jiwon arrived at the client's company without issue, and the employee in charge returned the stamped documents to her after copying them. Thank you. Will you tell Mr. Yu that I'll contact him again soon? I will. Thank you. Yes, have a safe trip back. After exchanging pleasantries with the woman, Jiwon turned around. Just then, she stumbled over a box of printer paper that happened to be next to her. This time, no one caught her, and Jiwon scraped her knee on the floor. Oh my, are you all right? The employee jumped up to help, but Jiwon quickly stood and brushed herself off before she had the chance to hold out her hand. I'm fine. I apologize for making a fuss. She felt conflicted. Had she tripped in the past too? As she walked out of the company, she came to a singular certain answer. No, she hadn't. At the very least, she had never fallen out of client's company in her entire life. Jiwon Ji slowly walked down the street, absorbed in her thoughts. Ji Hyuk had said to go to the hospital, but what she needed was some coffee, specifically an iced Americano. She drank the drink she wanted to have the most while she was undergoing chemotherapy. Across the road, she saw a familiar green sign. As she looked around while waiting to cross the street, her gaze stopped at a small tent and the sign that was hung over it. Fortune teller. We will tell you your fate. Fate? Jiwon knew the future. 
According to her fate, she was supposed to enter the fiery pits of hell after receiving a proposal from Win Wan, and she would likely toss her bouquet to Su Min, she shuddered. She would never do that again, even if a gun was held to her head. If she had to toss something to Su Min, it would probably be a knife or a kettlebell. Did that mean fate would be changed by those who knew the future? The traffic light changed to red. Jiwan pulled her gaze away from the tent and crossed the road. She was sure she she was sure her head would clear up after sipping a double shot iced Americano. That had always been the case before the cancer. Bzz. Her phone vibrated when she arrived on the other side of the road. Jiwan's face crumpled the moment she opened her pink flip phone. Minwan Park. For her fate to change, he was the trash she needed to throw away first. True, true, true. This chapter seemed a little short to me, but but it still sounded good. I was wrong at the beginning when I said that they were we were at her apartment. She was still at work. She was still at work. Um. Mm, mm, mm. It's getting good. But thank you so much for listening. I hope you enjoyed the video. If you liked it, be sure to give it a thumbs up. Leave a comment below uh, about how did you feel about the chapter three. How would you feel if you could go back? Would you need 10 years or do you think you would need to go back further than that? Personally, I think I might need 15 years. Like 20... 12 2012 2013 i think would be good and that's it's 2014 that's way more than 10 years i think that would be good for me but what about you if you like the video don't forget to like comment and subscribe and i will see you in the next one bye